Welcome to RegenMed Global, the podcast, where we bring you the newest breakthroughs in medicine and research to help bring hope in fighting incurable diseases. My name is Shyam. Today, we're here to discuss a major breakthrough that potentially has led us to find a cause to Parkinson's disease. Leading this research and speaking with us about this, we have Professor of Microbiology at University of Helsinki in Finland, Professor Per Saris. Professor Per Saris, it's a pleasure to go and have you. Um, we'd love to maybe just start off by having you tell us a little bit about your background and what you do. Okay, so I'm not a medical doctor, first of all. That's good for everyone to know. I'm a microbiologist uh, and actually a genetist. Uh, I was the faculty representative in a, a PhD thesis defense. In the thesis party, uh, the candidate's father, he was a neurologist, uh, Kari Murros. And we, of course, started to discuss what are you doing and what I am doing. And then we noticed that, well, he has an interesting case, a disease where they don't know uh, what is causing it, and, and there are some hints that it's caused by some something in the intestine. So I said, well, I'm an intestinal microbiologist too, so maybe we start looking at it. And, and then we started uh, kind of brainstorming, wondered, could desulfovibri bacteria, which are known to make magnetite, could they be somehow involved here in this process? And I said, well, we can check. Uh, we can check from the feces of the patient. Do they have more uh, the alpha vibria back there or not? And so uh, he got the ethical permission and uh, had the patient contacts and then he sent the feces to us and then we set up uh, the system to analyze them. And oh, surprise, surprise. Uh, it turned out that uh, these bacteria correlated with the uh, Parkinson's patients and also that uh, when you have more of them, uh, you also uh, there is a statistically significant correlation that uh, you also have more severe sy- symptoms. So this kind of at least suggested uh, that uh, this bacteria may have something to do with this disease. And isolated strains from uh, the patients and strains from the healthy ones and then fed them to a worm uh, which had uh, human alpha synuclein uh, fused to a, a kind of reporter protein so we could easily follow uh, what happens if the worms are fed with this uh, bacteria either from patients or, either, or from healthy ones and it turned out that those from the patients they actually uh, very strongly cause uh, alpha synuclein aggregation uh, and this uh, further suggests that they not only correlate with uh, this uh, patients but um, the, from patients the strain seems to be able to cause kind of this first step that is suggested to occur in, in the development of the disease. How are people typically exposed to this particular bacteria? The alpha vibrio bacteria, we can shorten them to DSV bacteria and typical for them is that they have certain interesting features. They can uh, make hydrogen sulfide and they can make uh, kind of hydrogenases that can react with metal compounds. This type of bacteria is actually, uh, you find them in the environment uh, in many places. What would you ultimately conclude about the relationship of the bacteria and Parkinson's disease? Our study now, this is the first one where we can co- clearly connect the bacteria uh, by correlation to the patients. We published to, uh, 2021 and, and two years after this uh, 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 knew it all. Uh, they found it in their population too, and they had more patients uh, that there is a correlation with this bacteria. And uh, if you have more of them, you have more uh, problems. The, the interesting thing with the patients are that uh, only as a, a portion of them have high amounts of the sulfovibrio bacteria. Uh, we are able to detect that all of them have the sulfovibrio bacteria, but we cannot, we don't know what the species are and we have not been able to isolate those. We have followed some of the patients, this is not published, but <laughs> those that have high amounts, they continue to ha- have high amounts, whereas those that have had low amounts, uh, their strains may disappear. And we have different theories. It may be hydrogen sulfide that is involved in the disease. And, uh, that fits with the 
and with the kind of inflammation that is uh, kind of um, associated with Parkinson's disease. And it's known that this gas can cause alpha nuclear aggregation. And in addition, this alpha vibrio bacteria they can also produce this magnetite, and magnetite can also, it's known from other studies, uh, cause alpha nuclear aggregation in our cells. And another interesting thing is you may have googled and found that uh, there are some indications that the Parkinson patients smell differently. And these compounds have been uh, kind of identified. And interestingly, these desalfavibri bacteria are able to produce uh, these compounds that can cause this smell. So that fits also to, to the picture here uh, with desalfavibri having some role in Parkinson's disease. And the majority are caused by environmental factors, and, and here this, this alpha vibrio bacteria could be one. So if I would be a patient, it may be just from kind of precautionary principle you know, to check that do you have uh, too much of this alpha vibrio bacteria in your feces. Uh, now we have setting up a system where you can send up the, the feces and we can analyze that do you have this bacteria. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be active in a few weeks. Uh, you can be, of course, in contact with me already if you want to be kind of in the list where we can start to do this analysis. There is commercial service around the world where you can send your feces and then you get uh, the microbiome, which means the total microbes that you have there in your feces, analyzed. And then you can also see, do you have the alpha vibrio or not. There is one important thing I would like to kind of tell, and that is, uh, we are, of course, interested in what happens in the family of the Parkinson patient. Does uh, the, the, the bacteria infect the other ones? And, and there we can see that many of the spouses of the, par of the Parkinson patient, they also have uh, the same uh, species. But we don't know is the strain the same, because they have very low amounts. And when, when you have very low amounts of the bacteria in the intestine, it's really difficult to isolate them. And we have not been able to isolate the, the, those uh, uh, strains. So we cannot compare the strains and be sure that it's the, is it the same as, as the spouse that has Parkinson. So I think there is um, one critical thing. You need to have something in your intestine that helps the bacteria to maintain itself and grow to high numbers. And if somebody else will get this bacteria, it doesn't necessarily cause you any problem because it cannot maybe maintain itself at high numbers. And then you simply you get rid of it and it probably doesn't do anything. Uh, <clears throat> but again, it's good to note there is no clinical studies yet uh, to show that is there any benefit of getting rid of the sulfovibria from your intestine. We are presently looking for viruses that would kill it, uh, for antimicrobial peptides that would kill it, for food items that has an effect uh, on them. And I can already tell you, it's not yet published, but uh, blueberries can infect, uh, can kill them. Uh, curcumin, also very effective. And raw garlic. <laughs> But I don't know what happens when you eat the garlic and it comes into your stomach with low pH. Maybe it's not any more effective. We are testing that now. I had a patient that uh, contacted me and told me that that she has a, a, a kind of a certain type of colitis and also Parkinson. And when she has these colitis attacks, the Parkinson symptoms are, are reduced. And this kind of <clears throat> gives uh, some hope for Parkinson patients that they may have less symptoms if they get rid of the of this desalfavibra bacteria. This needs, of course, clinical studies to to ensure what's going on there. Uh, similar things has been done with um, with fecal transplantation uh, to Parkinson patients, and there are a few ones that that get some relief of the symptoms. So it fits into the the, the figure that if you get rid of uh, bacteria that may cause problems, uh, you may have a relief of the symptoms. But of course you're not cured because this is a prion type disease. What do you see as the next steps then in terms of the study for with the bacteria, uh, Parkinson's and just the future? We are studying uh, this, uh, does it also cause alpha synuclein aggregation in mice when we feed the, the strains. And then we sequence the strains, the genomes and compare with uh, 
strains isolated from healthy ones and see if we can find anything that is special for the Parkinson patient strains. And then we look for different ways to kind of uh, eradicate this bacteria from the intestine. And there is one thing more for, for this. Uh, and uh, We had a st uh, one example with a patient with ha which had a lot of desulfovibrio bacteria. And we isolated the strain and we checked the antibiotic resistance. And then we gave, an, uh, or the medical doctor treated the person with uh, an antibiotic that it was sensitive to. And we followed the bacteria amount in the, in the feces. And of course, before he had a lot, during the treatment he almost had nothing. And then after treatment they grew back again to high numbers. So it's not easy to get rid of them by antibiotics. And, and that is because uh, m many patients uh, of the Parkinson's, they, they, they have constipation. For the moment, my main aim is also to understand by which mechanism they, they cause this uh, alpha synuclein aggregation. Is it via hydrogen sulfide? Is it via magnetite or graveite or superparamagnetic particles? Or do they have maybe some other thing that they can uh, kind of irritate the cells and cause this alpha synuclein aggregation. I would need collaboration with um, neurologists that would have a kind of uh, access to, uh, to many Parkinson patients. So I urge these persons to contact me and maybe we can do some collaboration. Uh, interestingly, uh, this is one of the few things where tobacco smoking protects a bit. And the interesting part there is that it's actually the cyanide can react with hydrogen sulfide and reduce the amount of hydrogen sulfide. So that would fit with the theory that the sulfovibrio causes problems via this, this hydrogen sulfide. Usually Sorry. Thank you so much. It was truly okay. a pleasure. And looking, uh, wishing you all the best in your future research. All right. Thank you. And bye-bye. Thank you.